him one and all Feel the joy that awaits you For the gifts we receive To Christ, Lord and King We honor and praise you Come on in, let us sing The sweet song of salvation He'll be there till the end A Savior and friend Lord of creation Good morning. morning. Welcome to New Hope Lutheran Church. How wonderful it is to be here together. Before we begin, I want to say a special thank you to Karen Ingram, our council president, who is going to be preaching for us this morning. (laughs) What I love about that is that everyone started applauding before I even said what for. I love that enthusiasm. Uh, This month at uh, New Hope Lutheran Church, we are talking about risk-taking mission and service. What does it mean for us to get out into the world and live out our faith? So Karen Ingram is very uh, gracious to preach for us on that this morning. Okay, with that said, I invite us to please stand as we are able, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water, here, water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. Look. Here is water. Here Here is our water water of life. life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you. Through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here Here is our water of life. life. Alleluia. And we will sing the entrance hymn, Here I Am, Lord. I'm alone of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will stay, I will make the stars of
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated as we continue with our song of the season. Sings all praise to you. Your love surrounds us our whole life through. You are the freedom of those oppressed. You are the comfort of all distressed. Come now, O holy and welcome guest. Soli Deo Gloria. Soli Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now it is time for children's time with Pastor Steve. I invite any children who are here today to come forward and join me. And if you're joining us online, we invite you to scoot up towards the screen. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me. So today I wanted to show you this picture that I drew, and I am very proud of it, although I'm not giving up my career as a pastor to become an artist anytime soon. What do you think? Thank you. What, what kind of animal would you say that is? And please don't say it's a dog. A sheep. A sheep. Thank you. <laughs> because today, a lot of our Bible readings are about sheep. It says that we are like sheep and like God is like a shepherd. What does that mean, that we are like sheep and God is like a shepherd? Well, what that means is sometimes, like sheep, we get lost, or sometimes, like sheep, we wander away. But God is like a shepherd who cares for us. So when we get lost or when we wander, God comes and seeks us out. God always loves us. You know, a shepherd, when they take care of their sheep, they want their sheep to be fed and, and loved. They want their sheep to have good sleep. They want their sheep to be cared for. And God does the same thing for you and wants the same thing for you. God wants you to be loved and fed and to have good sleep, to be loved and cared for. So wherever it is you go, even moments when you feel lost or it feels like you're wandering and you don't know where it is you're going, remember that God is your shepherd and God is always there with you. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. You may return back to your seats. first reading today is a very familiar one, the 23rd Psalm, but the wording is a little different than maybe we're, we're used to. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. 
The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to greet the Holy Gospel. To preach and witness with hearts on fire. Your spirit chooses the weak and small to sing the new reign where mighty fall. We can be with your gospel call. Soli Deo Gloria. Soli Deo Gloria. The gospel reading today is from John chapter 10. In language that recalls the 23rd Psalm, Jesus describes himself as the shepherd who cares for his sheep. He is willing to die for them, and he is able to overcome death for them. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the end of the Gospel reading. Please be seated. So if you're looking at the title of the sermon, you may be wondering, what in the world does a wet towel have to do with sheep? And I'm I'm hoping I'll be able to tie this together for you. Um, But when Pastor first said, would I be willing to uh, speak during our time of risk-taking mission and service, I said, sure. And I started thinking about things, and I just kind of cogitate and let things kind of come in and out. And then Pastor did a sermon on Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. And instead of focusing on the washing or the mess, what I focused on at that time was, man, that towel must have been pretty wet by the time he got to the end of the line. (laughs) And that thought stayed with me. How wet was the towel? With the towel as a symbol of service. Our towels can get wet at times, and then we need to maybe give them a chance to dry out, wring them out. But we do pick them up again and move on and continue the work. I hope you've seen the note note to myself. Make sure I point out the banner. Uh, We have added our risk-taking Uh, mission and service banner. But I also wanted to remind you, and uh, Deacon Lynn is wearing her robe today, 
when she was going through ministry, through seminary, to become a deacon, do you remember she wore a towel on the belt? Now she wears a stole, and Natalie does too when she's in her robe, because they have been ordained. They are ordained into the sacrament of word and service, while pastor is uh, word and sacraments. So it's a pretty visible reminder to us as the church and people of God that we are called to help each other. There are so many places in the Bible where we are given that reference. Um, searching for the lost sheep, taking time out and doing that, eating with the least of them, washing and drying feet. There are so many examples we have in the New Testament of Jesus reaching out, modeling for us how we're supposed to help others. If you remember, we keep hearing stories about the, jock the disciples jockeying for position. Do you like me best? Am I doing good enough? Am I better than my brother? Jesus showed them how to humble themselves, which means this is we humble ourselves and value others. When he washed their feet, he told them, love each other. He reminded them that they were to do as he had showed them, serve and help others. Uh, I think we've been told a few times, council is reading this book, Five Practices uh, for Fruitful Congregations by Robert Schneis. And one of the things that he said in there that particularly struck me was, a faith community without service dies like a tree with neither roots nor fruit, without nourishment or purpose. Mission is the difference we make in the lives beyond the inner circle of the church. God uses caring and effective people in each circumstance to improve others' lives in a multitude of ways. So how do we use our towels? Mostly when I'm up here, you hear me talking about the different social ministries that we do as a congregation. Today, I wanted to talk about just a few things that we do as individuals. These are things that I have heard you say by, in Bible study, in sharing opportunities, just in conversations over coffee or at a supper's eight. And it's astounding what we as individuals do. Most of us have helped strangers at some point or another. We talk about as simple as giving somebody directions. But we could stop and change a tire, even though we're going to be late for a meeting. We buy meals or maybe pay for groceries when somebody seems to be struggling, looking for something. I've heard people um, say that they saw somebody on the street that just looked like they needed some food, and they just ran to the nearest place and brought them food and came back and gave it to that individual. They weren't asked to do that, but they did it. When we visit shut-ins or people who are living in assisted nursing facilities or uh, retirement communities, when we go and visit people that aren't our family, or when we're visiting family, I've heard you say that you go into somebody else's room because you never see anybody in there and you talk with them. That is God's love in action that you make happen. Some of you teach skills to those in recovery programs, like the prototype program in Oxnard. You're teaching women who are recovering from things, giving them crafts and skills that may just bring them enjoyment, but may also be giving them a skill that can help them earn some money to take care of themselves and their children. Volunteering at after-school programs, tutoring, homework, helping kids with homework, being a role model for youth who don't necessarily have role models in their families. Uh, many of you have been part of Big Brothers, Big Sisters. When I think of that, when I think of Jack's Rains Turk. James Storehouse 
helping and being an example to youth in foster care who leave foster care system because they hit a certain age, not because they've acquired the skills needed to live independently as an adult. And so when you help foster youth, you really make a difference in their lives and help them know that they can go on. Recently, I think it was recently, we had a CPR class here. Many of you came. And just a quick show of hands, and how many of you know CPR? That's about two thirds raise their hands. And you don't know it because that's not something you do on a daily basis, but you want to be prepared so that if something happens, if you come across an accident or you're talking to somebody and they collapse in front of you, you know what you do. So you're prepared to help them. Cleaning crops, going out into the fields, bringing things in and taking them. Uh, food share does uh, the gleaning in our county. Well, Ventura County, I forget, I'm standing in LA County right now. Um, but we also have people here who go to the, around to the grocery stores and restaurants and pick up excess food. And they make sure that it goes to places that are feeding the hungry. Medical missions. We have had several members of this congregation go to Central America as part of a medical team to bring health and teaching health and, and, and actual um, cure for some of the people they're helping that have no access to medical care. Yet when these medical teams come down, what a difference in lives they make. And every single person who's done that has come back saying, I received so much more than I gave. And they talk about the love and the learning about another culture. And that is um, a real blessing that we have when we work with each other. A week ago Saturday, Linda Berry and I went to Ascension. And we learned about a group called Ray of Life. They assemble solar light kits and send them to Ukraine. If you watch the news, you know that most of the infrastructure in Ukraine has been destroyed. And people, when the sun goes down, it's dark. They have no light. They have no electricity. And during the day, they can be in darkness because they're in a bomb shelter, trying to uh, stay away from the bombs that are being dropped. These simple kits cost $125, but there are some of my volunteers a lot of them in Minneapolis, where they're then shipped from Minneapolis to um, Ukraine. This card went inside the kit that we helped to assemble. It says, all the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light. May this light bring you hope. And Mary Wenis and Linda did the actual work. I was the photojournalist. took that out of the way. I know that there are many other things that you do as individuals to help other people. And you don't necessarily talk about them. You just do them. And again, we're doing God's work. We're doing what was modeled to us and to the disciples. And one of the wet towels, you know, I don't have, there were so many beautiful flowers. I'm standing in the midst of God's garden here. Um, but I like props. And so I brought a towel that I use. I don't know, I know some people like, when they're working on their cars, they stick their rag in their back pocket. So it's just right there. I, this is how I walk around my house on cleaning day. I have the towel so it's ready to do whatever it needs to do. I call this my social justice towel. You can't, probably can't read it from back there, but it says, equal rights for others doesn't mean fewer rights for you. It's not pie. <laughs> when this towel gets wet, 
when it gets dirty, it gets into the laundry pretty fast. But when I'm using it a lot during the day, maybe I'm wiping dishes that day with it and then wiping my hands, or then I grab it and take a hot, hot plate out of the, the microwave. I, I'm reminded of how Jesus used the towel to wash the feet and dry the feet of the disciples. And those are the, some of the things that kept running through my head while I was thinking about the message today. Now, the gospel verse, there's where the sheet got tied into the wet towel. Verse 16 is the one that jumped out at me today. I know we hear this passage, but verse 16 says, I have other sheep that do not belong in this pen, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This verse stands out as a reminder to me that Jesus does have more than one pen. It's more than us at New Hope. It's more than Ascension. It's more than any of us. There are so many other sheep out there. Some are lost. Some are waiting to hear Jesus' voice to be brought back to the flock. He said, when they hear a voice, they will come. Robert Schneis, in his book, tells us to go and do. So many times, we, as congregations, wait for people to come to us. We are, our doors are open. We have a sign out front that says, all are welcome. And we think they're driving down Agura Road, and they're just going to go, Hey, that looks like a friendly place. Let me turn in here. It looks like a much more inviting place now that we have a beautiful garden, rock garden out front. But how many people have actually just turned into our driveway to come to church? We hear that people come because they saw something on our website. I mean, we have people in Bible studies and in the Wired Word study who come because they saw it online. They're not here, physically, we have people coming from other states to join our studies. One of the aspects of social ministry is making sure that we don't give in to the, um, we think we know best what you need mentality. And we decide you look someplace and you say, oh, they, all they need to get off their feet is, and you make it happen. But that may not be what the people need at all. So we are encouraged to ask people what they need, to get to know them, to have conversation and build relationship. And that is something else that Jesus calls us to do, is to build relationship with each other. When we think that we want to know, we say we want to do something, we have a social ministry committee, and what are we going to do here in the Canal Valley? We have to look for people that need assistance. We have to speak with them to find out what do they need. And how can we help them make that happen? It's not for us to go out and just take care of it for them. It comes back to that if you teach the man to fish, you feed him for a day. I don't know, if you, if you give the man a fish, you feed him for a day, but if you teach him to fish, you fed him for a lifetime. That's part of what our call in social ministry is, is to teach people to fish, to give them tools that they need so they can have their life sustained on their terms in their community. Now, well, is there a downside to risk-taking mission? Sure. Risk sometimes means we have to do something different. Um, for myself, I never built a house. I never even hung a picture uh, without my dad coming in and correcting it when I was a kid because it was you know, too high or too low or too something. But I went to Biloxi after Hurricane Katrina. And what did they ask me to do on my first trip there? help insulate a house. And I gave them that deer in the head, like, you mean somebody has to do that? Don't the house just come that way? 
and I'll tell you that is one job I will pay somebody to do. <laughs> it itches. They did not have enough baby powder to put on my arms to keep them from itching after dealing with insulation for a few days. On my second trip, I was able to learn how to measure drywall and help hang it. And you know how precise you have to be. If you don't measure carefully, that outlet is not going to get covered. Uh, you're going to, you know, you, you want it exposed and you cover it up and it's like, oh, got to start over. I was also asked to measure and cut the wood for windows in a house, a huge house that was being rebuilt. And oh, by the way, that's the saw you're going to use. I thought they were going to give me like this little hacksaw, you know, that's kind of safe. No, I had one of those big things that spins <laughs> and you have to pull the handles and I had to wear safety goggles and a mask to keep the dust from flying into my face. I was terrified. And I'm like, I don't think you want me to do this. You know, my mom says I'm prone to accidents. But I did it. And by the end of it, I was pretty darn good at cutting out wood. Would I do it again? I'm not so sure. <laughs> But it gave me a skill, and more importantly, at that time in that house, the owner of the house was there helping us. And we had an opportunity. We worked only on that house for one week and built a relationship with the family that was going to be living there. Enough so that the third trip I made to Biloxi, I went back to their house to see how it was doing, and the wife came running out. She remembered my name. That made me cry. Karen, Karen, you came back to see us. Do you want to see what it looks like inside? And she gave me the grand tour of her finished house and talked about how much it meant to that family to have people coming from all over the country to help them rebuild. People that they didn't know and people that they thought they'd never see again. Sometimes we risk not being loved back. Sometimes we go into things expecting that people are going to be so thankful and grateful for what we have done for them that we're stunned when you got to thank you, but that's it. It's not what you were expecting, but that's okay too because God has told us you do these things because it's the right thing to do, not because you expect somebody to thank you for it. Some people doing risk-taking mission and service feel act or find actual risk. The seven World Central Kitchen aid workers that were recently killed in Gaza are seven of the over 200 that have been killed in Gaza in the last several years. Missionaries providing medical services and running orphanages in Haiti have been kidnapped by the rebels and are currently still being held. We have cities in the United States that are arresting and putting people in jail for feeding the hungry in parks and on sidewalks. But does that mean we stop doing it? No, we keep doing it. We dry out our towel. We may set it aside, but we come back and we pick up our towel of service again and again and again to help our communities and others. Because despite these risks, we still have people both here and around the world that are taking the message to the gospel. We still have missionaries around the world who despite whatever danger is in the country they're in, continue to share the gospel and help the people and work with the people and have relationship with the people that they are ministering to and with. We still have doctors and nurses that use their medical skills to bring health, healing, and hope where they travel. We still have people feeding the hungry wherever, whenever needed. Sometimes, again, we have no idea what our actions mean to the recipient. We found out a little bit from Lutheran World Relief where our kits, our, our personal hygiene kits last fall went, and hearing the stories of what it meant from some individuals uh, to get those kits, 
you know you're doing the right thing. You, you see things happening beyond what we expected. The quilts that the peacemakers make, they help children develop because they're not sitting on cold floors, because they're warm at night. Their body's not spending all of its energy shaking off the cold. We get to hear stories when we do things through an agency, but sometimes when it's just us, we don't hear what happens. In his book, Robert Shea said, did get an opportunity. He met with a woman. She had lost everything, everything in a flood. And she told him, quote, I didn't cry when the water destroyed my home. But when I saw people traveling from so far away to help me clean up and rebuild, I couldn't stop crying. So I think about how wet Jesus' towel must have been as he finished washing and drying the disciples' feet. I picture him bringing it out and laying it aside to dry while he had supper with the disciples. I think about how wet our literal and figurative towels are as we continue our efforts to meet the unending needs. Jesus went off on his own to pray and recharge. I come to church to do fellowship with you, to hear your stories of making a difference in the world, to recharge, ready to step into the mission field and continue God's work. I was in Santa Cruz yesterday. Beautiful. It actually had sun. And we, of course, did one of many wrong turns. But we made a U-turn in a, it was the biggest Presbyterian church I've ever seen, and it was out in the middle of San Inez Valley with, I didn't see any houses nearby, but it was just amazing to me that this church was there. So we pulled into their parking lot, and we turned around to exit, and there at the driveway was the best sign ever. You are now entering the mission field. And I thought, okay, we need one of those at the end of our driveway facilities. <laughs> but as you leave church today and enter the mission field, I invite you to think about how you use your towel to keep others, to help others, and bring God's sheep into the fold. Amen. what I'm up against. I know someone who's here in the midst of it, fighting for me in a battle I could never win, all on my own. I might not be able to part the waters, might not be able to calm the storms, might not be
And in another example of how our God can, let us profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. And there's going to be a number of pauses as we pray for creation, the church, the world, and those in need. During those pauses, we invite you to lift up a single word, a short phrase, or to pray in the silence of your heart. Each petition will then conclude with a sung response. God hears all of our prayers, spoken or unspoken. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. God of all, from your hands came forth the beauty of the world, crafted in love. We lift up our prayers for the environment and all of creation. And together we sing. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Lord, make us whole. Please, Lord, Lord, be whole. Hold for each soul. God of grace in this place, hear now our prayer. God of unity. You bring us together into community. We pray for our church, our neighbors, and for the nations of the world. For peace. For the lonely. Together we sing. Hear our prayer. God of healing, you tenderly care for those in need. We pray for those who are ill, facing the end of life, or are in any distress. Alan, Tony, Lord Joe. Together we sing. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. God of joy, you weave grace throughout our lives. We name what we are thankful for, aloud or in silence. For good doctors, for good neighbors, for community. Together we sing. Hear our prayer. Now our prayer. 
into your hands, most merciful God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And we continue with stewardship and announcements. If you'd like to make an offering this morning, you may do so by placing it in the offering box, which is at the back of this church uh, sanctuary here. You can also give an offering online on our church's website. On our church website, you can also sign up for our newsletter and learn about all the different missions happening here at New Hope Lutheran Church. Your gifts of time, talent, and treasure help to keep God's mission strong in the world. We have a couple of announcements for us this morning. The first is about the upcoming prayer breakfast, and for that, I'm going to pass it along to Fred. Then after that announcement, then Terry, I'll invite you to come up for the next one. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Prayer breakfast is on May 2nd. We need you all to attend. It's not a fundraiser for the YMCA. The YMCA sponsors it. They do it to promote uh, Judeo-Christian values, spiritual values within the community. The prayers are mostly led by lay people representing prayers for peace, prayers for first responders, prayers for doctors, prayers for community leaders, prayers for youth workers, prayers for social workers, that sort of thing. Um, Steve and, Pastor Steve and I are both on the committee, and on the committee we are supposed to get sponsors, and we've done that, so the thing is sponsored, it's free to the people who attend, but our principal duty, responsibility, is to get people to attend, and so New Hope's a sponsor. You can support Pastor Steve, you can support me, you can support, most importantly, the YMCA and support the community with your attendance. So please register on the website. It's, uh, it's 7.30 to 9 on Thursday, May 2nd at Kyle Lutheran. And I hope you're all there and feel free to bring your neighbors, bring your friends. Can't bring your dog, but thank you. All right, we're praying on the second. Pray for health by Saturday so that you can work on service day here at Agura Hills. There's a link that allows you to go to uh, the place and register for the work you want to do. Over the years, we've done this many times. We've had up to 15, 20 people from our congregation. The mission field is outside, but in this community are people who could join us. Take an opportunity. If you have a shirt uh, that's with our church, wear that shirt proudly and let's serve our community and let them know we're here for them. That's Saturday the 4th. Then we have one final announcement, and that is that we are doing a workshop on church safety Sunday, May 5th. Mark Hollinger, who is a church safety expert, will be here speaking to us and answering any questions you might have. That's going to take place after worship, again, May 5th at 1130 or so. Oh, yes, it uh, looks like there's, there's another one. But for you to be heard, you, you might have to come up here, otherwise people won't be able to hear you in the microphone. I wish I could talk louder. No. Well, it's because the live stream, they won't be able to hear you. Oh. Sorry, we didn't know you would put you, uh, a microphone in front of you. <laughs> in addition to uh, Karen's wonderful message today, I wanted to share with you what we did at uh, Ascension a couple Saturdays ago. And if you are interested in helping to fund the Ray of Life solar light kits, I have some envelopes where you can send money. You can talk to me if you're at all interested in um, possibly doing a day like that here at church. It, it was a wonderful experience, and I have, just have to tell you a story. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the uh, gentlemen that was streamed in, told us this program started several years ago. In Africa, a woman had told him when she received this light kit, I wish I had that a few years ago when a black mamba snake killed her two daughters. She didn't have any light in her house. This ray of light solar kit gives them light. It also, because the, the ones that we made uh, went to Ukraine, powers up their cell phones so that they have communication between each other during these horrible days and nights that they have experienced. So if you are interested in just um, contributing to making one of these, it's $125. And that's from the every, absolutely everything, including 
the shipping, which is rather expensive. It, there's also a possibility to uh, contribute to make a water purification kit, which is just $25. But if you're interested, please see me afterwards and pray about this. This is the mission field where we can help. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Linda. Another great way to do mission and service in the world. I believe those are all the announcements that we have, so I invite us to please stand as we are able. And our worship continues. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite us to turn towards those cameras in the back. For those of us online, we wish you God's peace as well. And let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Our worship continues with Holy Communion, and I invite us to please remain standing as you are able. Let us continue with Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, gathered as God's people, in the celebration of Easter, let us sing together. Holy God, you alone are holy and you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell and with every breath, we praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the night and day, through the water, across the wilderness, out of exile into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son, who is at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer. Beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. For the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenants in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end. Let us proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Spirit and our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, and your church without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, done, on the, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Just a quick word about communion before we commune today, and that is we're going to be doing it a little bit differently as we have been uh, in the past. In the past, we've had one plate of bread in the center and then two stations of wine on the sides. And now what we're going to be doing is having two stations of bread in the center and then two stations of wine on the sides. So in other words, instead of coming up in one line to the center aisle, you can come up in two lines to the center aisle. You can pick whichever line you like, and then you can return back around to the outside to your seats. And we're doing this simply because it allows more people to participate in serving communion. And worship is always best when you have as many people participating as possible. So, with all of that in mind, the risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of this bread. So let us come and eat at God's table.
Let us pray. Shepherd in God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. I now invite us to please stand as we are able to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
New Hope Family 